I don't know if I um, sort of underestimated an NBR course or maybe overestimated Aston Villa going into that game. I have been accused of just being Premier League biased. Uh, especially when Liverpool got smashed by Atalanta. Like, you don't watch Italian football? I was like, well, no, I don't. <laughs> and I have to put my hand up and say, I don't watch Greek football much. So I was a bit surprised about Olympiacos. But um, look, how good were they or how bad were you in that first leg? Uh, a bit of both. Yeah. I think I was of the mind that, you know, these games are going to be hard for Villa. Yeah. You, you yeah. automatically think Premier League team against Greek team, Premier League team wins it. But I never felt like that because I knew Villa had had a difficult time in France mm. against, against Lille. These teams, Lille, Olympiacos, they've all been in Europe consistently yeah. over the last year decade. In, year out. Yeah, they, they play Champions League football. Villa haven't done that. So, you know, Villa aren't experienced at managing two two legged ties. Arguably the most important player, not playing in Emmy Martinez. Injuries are building up. The players are fatigued. They've had an unbelievable season, played a lot of games. The depth's not quite there at the moment. So, you know, Villa, the Villa players are, are, are struggling. But you always think as well, Unai Emery, European expert. But. Mm. Olympiacos came to Villa Park and they did a better job on Villa than a lot of Premier League teams have done this season. They sussed them out. They stopped Villa from doing what they wanted to do, cut the passing lanes, and then there was obviously a trigger point where they just thought, right, we're going to swarm them. And they did it. You know what? They were so efficient in front of goal. The striker that scored a hat-trick, great finishes, great movement all night. It was a constant thorn in the Villa side. And they took advantage of the fact that Villa's probably best centre-back wasn't there and their, their goalkeeper wasn't I, there. I hate making excuses for the Premier League sides because there's so much money swirling around in the Premier League. The players clearly get paid more than any other league in the world. But Jurgen Klopp did mention something about sort of the Premier League not helping Premier League teams yeah, when it comes to they get weekends football. off. Exactly. They get weekends off. They get fixtures moved around for them. Schedules are moved around for them just so they can almost represent their country in Europe well, whereas the Premier League doesn't do that. Mm. And you only have to look at, I mean, Aston Villa, the only team left from the Premier League in European competition. And it must ring true a bit what Jurgen Klopp is saying. Yeah, they looked full of energy. Full. You know, and they'll have not played again this weekend. I yeah. suspect that Villa will go there on Thursday to a hostile atmosphere and it'll be really, really hard. Mm. You know, in a weird way, part of me thinks it might suit Villa having to go away from home in the second leg and chase something rather than protect because they had to try and protect against Lille and they really, really struggled with it. In this kind of game, they know they've got to go there. Really, the first goal is vital. Villa need yeah. to score the first goal in that game. But at the moment, as a, as a whole club, that they, they can't keep a clean sheet. Mm. So, you know, they're probably going to score Olympiacos, which means Villa need to, sc- need to score three. It's, it's a huge, huge ask. It's just a shame you know, if Villa get this far and don't make it because the, the fans that have, have gone to every single game away from home, you know, they've been to some unbelievable places that they never would have experienced had Villa not been in the in the Conference League and they're, they're desperate to go, to go to the final. People have been building up their booking history so that they can be one of the 9,000 to, to go to the final. Not assuming that we'd get there, but thinking we're probably the favourites. But, you know, Olympiacos were brilliant and they, I'm a fair guy. They, they deserve to win. Where was it at the start of the season in your pecking order? Um Bear in mind, obviously, it would have been league or high league position, FA Cup, League Cup. Where would this one have been? Right at the bottom or just above the League Cup? Where? where? I think seeing that West Ham had won it the year before made me think, There's, you know what, Unai Emery, we're a good team. There's a good chance that we could win this tournament. So I think at the start of the season, I felt it was high in my personal priority list. As the season went on and we've been cemented in the top four for pretty much the, the whole season, probably end of September onwards... I just think Champions League is huge. And this isn't a popular opinion for me. There's Villa fans that completely disagree yeah, with, some fans with, with what I think. Yeah. For me, as a football club, with the PSR stuff that's going on now, for what qualifying for the Champions League does for you as a club, it does more for you as a football club than winning the Europa Conference League does. But if you're a football fan that's going to all those games, you want the memories of, of winning a trophy, you'll say that you're not going to remember in 10 years' time that you finish fourth. But I watched those Champions League nights for Newcastle and, OK, they didn't get out the group. But with the new format, you know, you're guaranteed at least eight games the way the format is as well, you're going to be having some sensational teams potentially coming to Villa Park if, if we do qualify. The financial rewards are there. Unai Emery as a manager wants to test himself in the Champions League. He, he said that himself and it's well known around Villa that he wants to manage at the highest level and the Champions League is that highest level. He's taken a team like Villarreal all the way to the semi-finals. That excites me. Mm. From, from my perspective, that excites me more than winning the Europa Conference League. How do you stay there? Look, you're going to make fourth unless something crazy happens towards the end of the season. I think you lose all your games. You still make fourth the way Spurs are playing right now. But how do you stay fourth? Like how Chelsea will be stronger again next season. They have to be. United, I know it's a disaster, but they'll 
outcome good. Because I look at someone like Newcastle, who finished fourth, and Newcastle fans would have hoped they would have kicked on. And Newcastle have fallen off a lot this season. How do you think you stay in and around that top four, top five, hopefully, spaces for English teams in Europe next season? How do you stay there? I think we're better set than Newcastle mm. were you know this this time last year in that we've got a manager that has managed in Europe a lot and has managed in the Champions League and up until recently Villa have actually managed the load of Thursday to Sunday brilliantly that defeat of the weekend was only the second time Villa have lost off the back of playing on a Thursday night so you know really they've managed it well and Unai Emery knows what he's doing with that stuff Eddie Howe's never managed in European competition I think Newcastle have had a lot of unforeseen circumstances this season not just with injuries but also you know Sandro Tonali their massive big money signing yeah, you know for him to miss the whole season for the reasons that he's missed it for has been massive for them and I don't think they've actually really recovered from that Newcastle. I just think as well because Villa have built up from kind of if they qualify, if they, they play Conference League then they jump up to the Champions League from the Conference League they've had a season of playing in Europe. Newcastle went straight from not playing in Europe to playing in Europe in the you know the highest pedigree tournament that you can play in. So I do think there's a lot of differences between the two teams. I think Villa are in the position with us as a squad now where they probably need to add you know two or three real bits of quality that will add depth to the squad as well and improve, improve the first 11 so that you've got better players coming off the bench. But I don't think we need to reinvent the squad completely to be able to cope with the load of Champions League and Premier League. So I just think Villa are in a slightly different position to what Newcastle were in. Yeah, overall then, when you look at your expectations for the start of the season and where you are now, so it's potentially like it's going to be difficult, I think, to beat Olympiacos. So you're looking at a Europa Conference semi-final, you're looking at a top four space. Overall, how do you judge your season? How do you grade it? If we get Champions League football, that's an A. It's an A, isn't you, it? You, you yeah. can't, he's the manager There's of the no year. There's no two ways to look at it, yeah. yeah. It's about, you, he picked Villa up in 17th place after I've sat there and watched probably some of the worst football I've ever seen in my life under Steven Gerrard. He took basically that, well, you know, he took the same players up to seventh in the same season, qualified us for Europe. I had us down as fifth in Europa Conference League at the start of the season. That was my expectation, probably at the high end of my expectations, to be honest, but I had one eye on the fact that fifth may be enough for Champions League football. If he gets us into the top four in his first full season, he deserves all the credit in the world. He is a phenomenal manager. I still, I think he gets a lot of credit, but I still don't think he gets the credit he deserves. You know, when those big jobs come round and people are saying about Deserbi, I'm thinking, what people are not saying about about Unai Emery? Should be lucky. I don't want him to go, obviously. Yeah, and you know, yeah, he's going to yeah. he's just signed, signed a year's extension, and he's going to sign another new contract in the summer. So he'll be at Villa for the foreseeable because he's building something in his own name, and he's got everything around him. He's geared towards him. Everyone that they've hired that works in the football department. Is basically an Unai Emery hire, and he won't get that anywhere else. So he's going to be at Villa for a long, long time. Villa have got ambitious owners. You know, we're a massive football club that's really been a sleeping giant over the last the last ten or so years, and probably actually in my lifetime because we won the European Cup three years before I was born. You know, so I never thought I'd get to see Villa playing Champions League football. Certainly didn't think I'd see it in my thirties. And on, on a personal level, to, to get, I've, I've done this before with you, just to get sentimental for, for a minute. You know, I've got. Friends that have lost parents recently that, that have you know gone to the Villa that their whole life and you know that, that unfortunately they're not going to see Villa playing in the Champions League. Like for me, I know that I'm not going to be able to go with my dad forever. I've been going with him my whole life. We both had season tickets mm -hmm. virtually my entire life. If, if Villa qualify for the Champions League and I get to sit there and watch Champions League football with my dad next season, it will be just like emotionally like an unbelievable moment. You got sentimental there. I can't even dig you now because of this. <laughs> what are you going to? I was uh, going to had a couple of digs at you now. I was going to kind of got to hold them in now. Um, very quick one segue because uh, you know me and you would probably see each other once every couple of months. Um, who do you think the player of the season is out of interest? Who's, who's the player of the season? I'm, I'm looking around it. I'm just looking at Jez. I'm looking at Alfie. <laughs> like, I, I think because you know the reason I mentioned that is because. I, I said Ollie Watkins could be in the top five or six. I think, I think he will be. Yeah, I think I think he will. I think he deserves to be uh, goals and assists. But who is who do you think is winning it? Foden. Foden. He's won the football writers already, hasn't he? Declan Rice, Foden. Between it's those one two. of those two. One of those two. One of those two. Mm. I'd probably be tempted to give it to Rice. Yeah. That would probably be where my vote would go. Buy so, of the season. Buy of the season. Cole Palmer. It's difficult to, to disagree with that, isn't Cole it? If you, if you think you know he's the only Chelsea signing that's been a, a qualified success, it yeah. would probably have to be Cole Palmer. But there's probably been someone else who was cheaper yeah. that we can't think of off the top McCallus of our heads. Been all right. I had to get Liverpool playing. I, know, I knew you'd you, you, well, you, you try. I haven't you? mentioned Liverpool all, all day. I had, to get, I, had to get, I had to get I had to get something in. Russ Barkley, Russ Barkley on a free of Luton manager. Not, not a bad signing. Not a bad signing. Not a bad signing. But no.